Hello and welcome. This is Jennifer. So glad you're here. So today's video is all about dimension versus no dimension. We will create cards that have a lot going on on top with lots of layers and then we'll create a similar card that is smooth. That will be nice, almost one layer and easy to mail. I know that everyone has different preferences, so I thought I would share ideas for both. And I have lots of tips for faking that dimension. Also, I apologize if the sound is a little off on my video. I'm in a hotel room this weekend and I don't have my microphone, but I wanted to bring you this video. All right, let's get started with this example here. This one has lots of layers and dimension, and the next one, which is somewhat similar, will be super smooth. Let's start out with the background. I'm using the new Concord and Ninth Picnic Plaid Turnabout Stamp. These are the really cool turnabout stamps that Concord and Ninth does that allow you to stamp four different colors four times, rotating between to create a colorful background. Now, every time you get a turnabout stamp, it comes with a guide that you'll use to line it up. You'll also need a jig. You can create your own. I'll link to a video that shows how. But I'm really excited because Concord and Ninth just came out with a jig that is meant for this and it's sticky on one side so it holds your paper in place. It also has grid marks which really make it easy to use. There are marks on there to place a piece of cardstock that's A2 size, four and a quarter by five and a half, or you can use any size that fits on the jig and I'll demonstrate both today. Now let's set up the stamp. This is easy once you've done it a couple times. This is the guide that the stamp set comes with. You take the stamp and you lay it right onto the printing of the guide. So you can see how I'm just lining up the stamp with the printing. It's pretty easy to do, especially with more detailed stamps. All right, now I'm gonna pick this up and I'm lining that X that you see in the back of the guide up with the X that you see on the grid. I'm putting a piece of cardstock under there so you can better see the lining up of the X's. So we have the X on the jig, the X on the background of the guide. I'm lining up those X's, so I'll press that all down onto the jig. Now I can put the jig in the corner of my stamping tool. I'm using my Misty today. Then we'll close the door, which will grab the stamp, and we'll remove the jig and that guide. We'll keep that guide for the next time we want to use this stamp. So now it's all set up and I can make as many cards as I want. I'm starting with a piece of blue cardstock. This is Concord 9th Aqua Sky, which is my favorite color of cardstock ever. And I've cut it to five and a half by five and a half and put it at the center of the jig. Now you can stamp this with whatever inks you want. I'm using Concord and Ninth today because they have a lot of examples on their website with color suggestions and they are all so good. So it's a very comfortable ink line to use. After I stamp this first position in the first color, I will rotate my jig one turn. You can see me turn it here. And now I can stamp it again in a different color, and this will slowly build our background. This time I'm stamping with a slightly darker blue color. You may notice it stamps a little splotchy. That is because I just re-inked these ink pads, and I didn't really give it much time to absorb. If you give it some time to absorb, it'll be much better, but you'll notice the results are good in the end. Now I'll rotate it one more time. This time I'm stamping with the parsley color. Now I mentioned that I like the color selection of Concord and Ninth inks. Another reason I use their inks often is because they have card stocks to match. And you can see that the ink cleans off my stamps and does very little staining. So you can see my stamp looks brand new. Now it's time for the fourth turn. This time I'm using white pigment ink. I love the look of white pigment ink when it overlaps with darker color inks. Notice here what it looks like on that green. I just feel like it steps up this background so much and adds some fun highlights. So anytime you use a turnabout, try using white for one of the turns. I love the results of this, such a fun background and all you need to do is add a sentiment, but I have lots of ideas for you. First, I'm gonna heat set it. I used white pigment ink. Whenever I use pigment ink, I like to heat set it so I don't smear it. It takes a little bit of extra time to dry. And I'm also stepping up this background by adding some lines. On the aqua sky lines in the background, I'm using a white gel pen, and I just have a straight edge here. When you use a white gel pen, it's best to kind of go slow. If you find that the white isn't very bright, you can let the white ink dry, then go back and do another layer on top, and that will intensify that white. 
I also did some lines with a glitter pen. That way the background would have some subtle sparkle to it. It's hard to see it in the video, but in real life it adds a lot. Then finally, on the white lines, I used a silver paint pen. It's a paint marker, I guess. These are from Colorista, and I've been using these lately, and I love them. This will give a more solid line, a thicker line, because of the thicker tip. But look at that metallic shine that you get from it. I have another video coming up soon where I use these type of markers to uh, add some color to a dark background, so stay tuned for that. I absolutely love the results of this and all the different elements to this plaid. And because I used a bigger piece of cardstock, I can cut this down to an A2 card size and I'll have a little strip or border left over that I can use on a card in the future. So this first card, we're gonna add lots of dimension and layers. This is how I like to do cards, but I know not everyone's that way. So I'll have the smooth option after this. Now I'm using the Concord and Ninth Happy Thanks die set. I love this die set. There's the word thank you, there's the word oh happy day, and then there's the shadow too. But the words themselves cut out in outlines. So there are many ways you can use these together, and I'll show a couple today. Now for this first one I'm using thank you. I cut the shadow die from Aqua Sky, which is the same color that we used on the background. Then I cut the word thank you from white, and you can see it makes this outline. I'll save the letters that fit in it for another card. I'm gluing this onto the blue shadow die cut, and this is Gina K Connect liquid adhesive in a fine bottle. This is a fine tip bottle. This is my favorite adhesive to use, and you'll see me use it a lot in this video. I then put something heavy on it while it dries. I also used the thank you die, and I cut several times from black cardstock. I'm gluing a few of those layers together, and this is the word thank you itself. Once these are glued together for lots of dimension, I'll glue them into the openings of the white die cut. This is all about building dimension and making your sentiment stand out against the busy background. I also think this particular die set is great for busy backgrounds because you have those shadow areas around the words to make them stand out. I trimmed my background down to be four by five and a quarter inches and I added it to a note card that is four and a quarter by five and a half. I'll now glue my sentiment on the middle, and then we will add a little stamp sentiment underneath and some flowers. I love building up all of these layers. For a stamp sentiment, I use the Concord and Ninth Happy Thanks stamp set. This goes really well with the die that I used here and on my next card. So I stamped a sentiment on white cardstock and trimmed it down. I also put two scraps of cardstock behind it so you can see it's thicker and stronger. So no matter what, this will hold up well going through the mail and it also pops up off of our card. So I glued that under the thank you and now it's time to add some flowers and leaves. I'm using the Concord and Ninth Petal Pushers die set. I'm using the flowers and leaves on this card, and then later I'll use that large square frame and the friend sentiment. So I die cut some different flowers and leaves from colors of cardstock that match the inks on the background. I chose to use the darker colors so they would stand out a little bit more from the background. And I'm tucking these around our sentiment. Notice I only put glue at the center of the flower and I kind of curled up the leaves. That way I could put them up against our dimensional sentiment and it'll fit in without covering it up too much. I also added some leaves to each of these flowers. All right, now it's time to add a little more sparkle, those little details that make a big difference. I added some pearls to the center of the flowers and now I'm using a glitter pen just to draw some lines on each of the flower petals. This will just add a touch of sparkle. So here's our first card. This is the layered dimensional version. You can see how all of it stands out against that busy background, but still allows that background to show. You can see the shiny details in the plaid and on the flowers that I did with the glitter pen. Now this is the type of card that I enjoy making the most. I would put this in an envelope and then put it in a rigid mailer or padded envelope to mail it. I'll link to those two options below if you're interested. Now let's create a similar kind of card, but this time super smooth. So this one is super easy to mail and it has a really unique look. I again used a turnabout stamp set, but this time the Concord and Ninth Exclamations Turnabout. Now this one I think is fun for any kind of congratulations or thank you or birthday card. And it's a really cool pattern that you can actually add some details to, which I'll show. 
I have my turnabout jig and I've cut a piece of Aqua Sky cardstock once again. And this time I cut it to be four and a quarter by five and a half inches, just to show you have the option of doing any size that you want on this jig. I'm using the same colors of inks that I used before. So starting with Aqua Sky, stamping that, then I'll turn my jig. I'll stamp with the ocean side. After I'm done with that, I'll turn my jig and then we'll do the parsley. And do note that I do clean my stamp off in between each time, just using a dry cloth. And then finally, we'll stamp with the white pigment ink. And by the way, whenever you try to remove cardstock from a sticky mat, just kind of curl the back away and your cardstock will pop right off. And then to clean the sticky mat, all you need to do is wipe it with a baby wipe. I just use a quick swipe, or you could run it underwater. Okay, now it's time for the sentiment. We're gonna do a die cut inlay here and you'll see it's easy to do. I have a piece of white cardstock cut to the same size as our background, four by five and a quarter. I'm putting the shadow die and the word, oh happy day together. And I'm taping them so they stay connected. And then I'll run it through my die cut machine. Now I'll take those white die cuts and set them aside and I'll use the shadow die itself, just the large outline, and cut that from the center of our stamped background. Now the die cut we get here, we can save for another project. The negative space piece I'm using on this card, so I'm putting adhesive on the back of it and adding it to the front of our note card. Now we can start to do the die cut inlay, and I tell you it's easier than you think. And this will give us a really cool card without dimension. So there on the left, I have a thin white die cut that we created when we did the white die cutting a moment ago. I'm gluing that into the opening on our card. So it fits in there like a puzzle piece. So I'm just filling in this open space so that we'll have our whole sentiment there in a smooth, continuous background. Next, I'm cutting the Oh Happy Day from Aqua Sky cardstock, the same that I used for my background stamping. And I'm taking the little outline of the sentiment putting glue on the back of that, and then fitting that into the opening. So this is all fitting in together like a puzzle, working from the outside in. And then finally, I cut the sentiment from black cardstock, and I'll glue that in right in the center. So this ends up being nice and bold and stands out against that very busy background. Because we have these outlines, the white and the blue really allow that black to stand out even more. And the best part is this is super smooth. It would be great to mail, no dimension to it, but it still stands out quite nicely. I finished up by putting in those little in-between die cuts. I enjoy this process. It's like putting together a puzzle. And look at this, look how smooth that is. If you're interested in more die cut inlay techniques, I'll link to a video up here on the top right. All right, now at this point, I thought I would add that detail to the background stamping. And it's little outline exclamation marks that you can line up with the marks on your background. I should have done this before I did the die cut inlay, but I didn't think about it, so I thought I'd just do it now. I'm using uh, the Concord and Ninth Dove ink, which is a great gray ink, like a middle color gray. And I'm just stamping it a few times to make it a bit darker. Because I already have my inlay done, I did have to mask off those letters to add the stamping. So if you try to make this card, I definitely recommend doing this before you do the die cut inlay. But you know, sometimes when you're card making, things come together in odd orders because you're being creative as you go. Here is our completed card. I did add one layer to it, and that is just three star die cuts that I created from silver glitter cardstock. Very little bulk to this, easy to mail, but you have the look of dimension and a lot of detail on the card. So now we have two cards, one with lots of layers, one that's super smooth, but both have a lot to offer and are worth giving a try. So they use similar products on the two so you could get a comparison. All right, now let's do our next pair of cards. And these actually look very much the same, but one will be smooth and one will have dimension. This time I'm using the Concord and Ninth Petal Pusher Stencil Set. There are actually two layering stencil sets included in this. So there's the one that has the bouquet of flowers. I'll be using this one that creates a square background of flowers. I love this stencil set. In fact, I made a bunch with my daughter this weekend. I will have to share those over on Instagram. All right, now the nice thing is, is the petal pusher dies that I showed you earlier, this square die cuts them out nicely. So I'll use that too. Now here's a little trick for doing stenciling on a lot of backgrounds. 
I take two pieces of cardstock and I tape them together over there on that top left corner. And this is just like a corner that you can put your stencil and cardstock in each time and it'll line up. So this is kind of like creating your own stencil jig. There are so many ways to line up stencils. This is just another option. Now I created a hinge with my first layering stencil in that little corner. And now I'm sliding underneath it a piece of cardstock. Now this has four stencils and you can ink them up however you want. You can do, um, you know, gels or paste. I'm just doing basic inking. After doing the first piece of cardstock, I can take that out and slide another piece in right into that little corner that we created. And now I can ink over this. So I'm creating several backgrounds at once and I'll save some of them for later. Since I have it set up, I might as well create more than one. After I'm done with the first stencil, I can remove the hinge from our little jig and put in the next stencil. These are really easy to follow because there's printing on the stencil so you know which side is up and it's easy to line up. All right, so we'll create a little hinge up there, slide in our inked cardstock that already has the first layer done, and I'll add some green inks over this. To save time, I'm just doing basic stenciling here. I'm doing the same color ink over the whole stencil, but if you wanted to, you could do different leaves, different shades of green, or do each flower a different color. That you would just wanna use a smaller stencil brush, but I feel like this is such a fast way to create a lot of backgrounds by doing one color over each. All right, so now we're on to the third layering stencil. This does little flowers that fill in the background. And I do yellow over this for most of my backgrounds. All right, now I can come in with the fourth stencil and put it into our little jig there and slide each piece under. This will add the final details to our background. So thankfully, I was able to create a bunch of square inked pieces to create on lots of cards, and I can save any for the future. I do encourage you, while you have your supplies out, make extras. Next, I'm cutting out a couple of these backgrounds using that postage edge square die that you see on the right that's part of the Petal Pushers die set. Let's start with the card that has no bulk to it. This is the smooth inlaid card. Now I thought it'd be fun to take that square and cut it so that part of the die cut goes on the top of the card and part on the bottom. So I cut this about two and three quarter inches. It really doesn't matter. You can cut it anywhere. But I thought it'd be fun to have a bigger area on the top. I have a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. This is the piece that we're going to cut our dies into to create spots for the inlay. So I am placed those blue pieces there just for spacing, and I'm taking the friend die from the Petal Pusher set, and I'm taping it right there in the center. Right now I'm just planning out where it'll be. I've got my little sentiment stamp there just to get the spacing right. So I'll tape the word die down and run that through our die cut machine. At this point I wanted to make sure that my die cuts were straight, so I used a T-ruler to check it. Should have done that before I did the die cutting, but thankfully it worked. Now I need to cut openings for these blue pieces to pop in. So I'm lining up that blue piece at the top, just holding it there, and putting the die around it. So I'll just line it up with the blue piece. It kind of pops on it like a puzzle piece. It just pops right in place. And I'll tape the die there and then pull the blue piece out. So now I know that this will cut in a spot on that white background, that once we're done, the blue piece will just fit right in. I then will repeat the process for the smaller blue piece on the bottom. So basically we're just cutting these openings in this white cardstock piece. And then we will do all the die cut inlay at the same time. I have a white note card ready to go. It's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I will glue this white strange looking die cut piece right onto the card front. It was cut to the same size so it'll fit edge to edge. Now it's time for that die cut This inlay. is the fun part for me because again, it's like putting together a puzzle. I first put in this top piece, then we'll put in the bottom blue piece and it just fits right into the die cut openings. Then we can inlay each of the letters for the word friend. I cut those from black cardstock so it'll really stand out. Once you have everything glued in place, it's super smooth on the card front, very little bulk so it'll easily mail. Now I can stamp the sentiment underneath the word friend. I think it'd be fun to create a bunch of cards like this where you have your smooth inlaid background with the word friend and leave the stamp sentiment underneath off 
Then when you have a particular occasion in mind, you can stamp whatever occasion sentiment there that you want. So you could do friend thank you, friend happy birthday, and you'd be ready to go very quickly. I did want to add a little sparkle to this, but without bulk. So I'm using the Trinity Stamps Shimmer and Shine Confetti. These are very flat sequins with no hole in the center, super flat. They're just basically tiny little iridescent looking circles, and they pick up whatever colors around it. So I put those at the center of each of the flowers. I also used a glitter pen to color the black letters. This makes them super sparkly. And so these are little details that you can add to this card without adding bulk. So here's the final card. You definitely could mail this as normal without any problems. And it's still very interesting because you have that die cut inlay that gives a smooth result. And we added sparkle to the word friend and those flat sequins to the center of the flowers. I did also use my glitter pen to create little dots on the background just to add even more sparkle. All right, now let's do the version of this card that has dimension to it. This is how I normally do cards, but both options are great. So I have white cardstock pieces. You can see these are scraps that I had left over from some inking that I did. I'm cutting these down to be slightly smaller than our square die cut. And I have four layers of that scrap white cardstock. Now I'm going to do the same design that I did last time so we can do a great comparison between the smooth and the layered versions. I cut these pieces down so that I can add dimension behind each of our blue pieces. So here is our blue inked piece and I'm just gluing three or four layers of scrap cardstock behind it. This is my favorite way to add dimension to my card. If you use foam tape, sometimes it gets squished in the mail and it'll leave a crease on your card. By doing this, the card will be nice and strong and you're using up scraps that would otherwise likely end up in the trash can. You could also use a piece of craft foam here if you prefer. But every time I add dimension, I like to use the scraps. All right, so I glued the bigger piece towards the top of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card and the smaller towards the bottom. Now it's time to add the sentiment. To get the letter spaced just right, I cut a negative space of the die cut. You can see that's the blue piece here. I'm taping it down onto my card where I want my letters to be. This will just give me a guide for gluing the black letters down. I will remove this blue negative piece in a moment. So I'm fitting in each of those letters into the openings. Once I've done all of the letters and given it some time to dry, I can peel away that blue negative space and my letters are perfectly spaced and straight. That's an important trick. I really think it's a big time saver when you're doing individual letters. I then can add my stamp sentiment underneath. I want the friend to stand out even more, so I die cut additional letters and I glued those on top. So each of those letters is four layers thick. As I did on the last card, I'm covering those black letters with a glitter pen. This will add a lot of shine. It almost makes it look like a dark metallic. And then on this one, I'm adding a layer of Ranger Glossy Accents. This will give a shine and kind of a smooth uh, jelly bean look to it because it has a little dimension to it. I put my Ranger Glossy Accents in a Gina K fine tip bottle. You just need to burp it before you put the lid on and it won't get clogged. I did add some gemstones to the center of the flowers for even more sparkle. And here you can see the final result. Lots of dimension to this one, lots of shine. I also added white gel pen dots to the center of some of the flowers just to make it pop even more. So now we have two cards, the same design, the same colors, all of the same sentiments and such, but one is very smooth and one has dimension. It's fun to see them side by side because they're each special in their own way and you can choose what you think would be more appealing to you. It's time for my last two cards, which are completely different. I thought these stencils and dies were really creative and unique from Concord and Ninth. And so I thought I'd make some bold, colorful cards, one with a lot of dimension and one super smooth. I'm using the new Concord and Ninth Garden Grown collection here. Now these are all sold separately or together. There are layering stencils, dies, and a small stamp set with really funny sentiments to go with this kind of vegetable theme. I really like sets like this that are different. They're not flowers or stripes like I use a lot. Something a little unique that will surely surprise the recipient. 
I'm starting with the layering stencils and I have a jig like I created before. I'm not going to show all of the inking to save time in this long video, but do know there are three stencils to it. The first one's easy because you can do it all green. The second one, you can get really creative and do each of the vegetables a different color. This is best if you have a smaller blending brush, but if you want to, you could do the same color for all of the stencils and get like a tone on tone look for a background. I love doing this because I'm not great at coloring. This gives me the look of coloring, but it's super easy and the results are beautiful and blended. After I did the second stencil, it's time for the third and final stencil. I love these little mushrooms included in it. Lots of details to these stencils. All right, so once I did all of my inking, very basic, using all Concord and Ninth inks, we have this fun vegetable background. I created two this way for our two cards. Let's start with the card that has no dimension to it. It's nice and smooth. I have my stenciled background and a rectangle die, and I'm cutting right from the top center of the background. I also have a white die cut over there that I cut with the same die. I'm using the tomato dies on this card, so I'm starting with the biggest tomato die first, and I cut that from the white. Then we have the next layer, which is the green that goes on the top. I'm taking the die and putting it where I'll plan to put the die cut, right onto this piece, and I'm taping it there and running it through our die cut machine. Then we have the top of the tomato. It's a tiny little die. I'll tape that in place and run it through our die cut machine. So just like we did before, we're cutting the windows for where we will do the colorful inlaid pieces. First, I want to stamp my sentiment. I'm stamping that right towards the top center. I realize I didn't really center it well, but I'll fix that later. Now I use those same dies and cut from pieces of colored cardstock and added a little inking to it for a shadowed look. This is the best way to make your die cuts look dimensional when they're really flat and smooth. Now this next trick is really helpful in getting the look of dimension without adding any bulk. So we're completely faking it here. On this background, right around the opening, I'm putting a light amount of gray ink. This is Dove ink from Concord and Ninth, and I'm using a small blending brush. I'm just putting a little ink only around this window. That way when we put the white die cut in the center, it'll look like it has a little shadow around it, which fakes the look of dimension. This is a great way to make your inlay cards pop even more. Now I'll glue this piece onto the front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. I first glued it down upside down, but thankfully I used liquid adhesive so I could fix it very quickly. Then I will glue in our white die cut piece into that opening and then glue in the tomato and then glue on top of that the little green pieces too. So this has a teeny tiny bit of bulk there where those die cuts overlap, but very little. This will go through the mail very easily. I did add some tiny little red heart die cuts to the background and above our tomato. The reason I did that is my sentiment is a little bit off to the left. So I put that little red heart to it on the right and it kind of makes it look like I didn't get it off center. I also thought that those little pops of red would be fun. It's just one die cut thing Thick, so it doesn't add a whole lot of dimension to the smooth one layer card. All right, now it's time for the other card that has lots of dimension to it. And this is really fun because it's just a lot of gluing die cuts together. So I die cut the carrot from orange cardstock, and then I put a piece of cardstock on the back of it. The reason I did that is I wanted to inlay all of those little pieces, those little lines, with a slightly darker orange cardstock. Remember, these little details can be skipped and it'll still look great in the end. I enjoy adding these details as part of the creative process, but it's totally up to you. I also added a little green blending ink to the leaves that stick out of the top of the carrot, and that just gives the look of dimension even more. Next, I white heat embossed a sentiment on black cardstock. I want to add this over the carrot, but there's a lot of dimension to that carrot. So here's what I do. I put an additional strip of back black cardstock to the back of the sentiment to make it stronger. And then I put additional strips of black cardstock on the back of the sentiment on the left hand side. The right hand side will have the dimension of the carrot. So this will make it more even. And that way when we mail this, the sentiment won't get crushed, it'll be nice and strong, and it has a lot of dimension. This is an example of where you could use foam tape if you wanted to, but this will hold up better. 
Also, I keep thin scraps of white and black cardstock to use behind my sentiment strips to make them stronger and to have that dimension. And so it's a great way to use up those scraps. Now on the finished card, I did add some tiny little red hearts here and there just to balance things out. This has dimension to it, a lot of fun, but you could also do this in the smooth one layer option that we did before. I did put glossy accents on those red hearts so they would have a bit of shine also. So here is a comparison between the two. On the left, we have lots of dimension. On the right, it's smooth, but we did some tricks to make it look like there's a lot of dimension to it. And it's a great option if you want to step up your card a bit. All right, I hope you like these examples and the comparison between lots of dimension and no dimension. It's a great way to kind of change up how you do your cards. If you're interested in the supplies that I use, they are linked below in my description. At the end here, I'll click to a couple other related videos that you can check out. Thanks for spending this time with me. See you soon.